Hey everyone, Ro here. Today we're discussing the perceptions of the Emperor of Mankind. General spoiler warning to begin, as the events we are discussing today are from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But, with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, so the Emperor of Mankind the most pivotal character of the entire 40k setting. Without him, it simply ceases to exist. He is both the beginning and the end, the founder and guiding light of the Imperium. And for all this character may be the center of the universe, for all he is talked about, the truth is he is still as much a mystery as he's ever been. Even something so simple as his appearance still remains a fascinating enigma. And well, that's one we're going to be discussing today, as we ask what truth is there in all the Emperor's various guises. Just why do people see a different version from the others? Now, over the years, the Emperor has appeared in several different forms. The most typical and often envisaged one is no doubt the dark-haired, classically golden-armoured, flaming sword-wielding man, the one we most often see in all the Imperium's iconography. However, throughout the Heresy series, there have been alterations to this when the Emperor has presented himself. Sometimes they're small, and sometimes they're large. Now, surely one of the most pure examples of the Emperor we have seen was in one of his own memories during the novel Master of Mankind. And this was an ancient time of terror, far, far back into the time of ancient Earth known as the Bronze Age. And here the Emperor was nothing more than a boy, living within mud brick huts and working the surrounding land with his family and village. In what's described as an early precursor to the Hittite civilization, or at least the 40k equivalent of that. Now, all we get told specifically of the boy emperor is that he has dark eyes, but this certainly puts a lot of credence into that classical image of the Emperor being largely truthful. While so many of the Emperor's appearances are from others' point of views, and Master of Mankind is written from the Custodes' viewpoint, there's no real image for the Emperor to be conveying here. So I personally think this was nothing more than a truthful memory. This truly was a glimpse of the Emperor, as the boy he once was. Now, later in that novel, as the Emperor strides to war alongside his custodies, we get a description of the Emperor very much as you've always known him. A golden, armoured, grown-up version of the boy from before. The bronze-skinned, dark-haired master of mankind. However, where things begin to get much more interesting, and the real purpose of this discussion, is when we get perceptions of the Emperor, which are reflected very differently from others. In particular, those of his sons, the Primarchs. And really, the most curious one of these was from the Lion's Primarch novel, Lion L. Johnson, Lord of the First. Now here, the lion is within the presence of his father, and during this meeting, he is reflecting how his father appears to him and his brothers, and how all those appearances are different. Jagatai is said to mention him as weather-beaten and unsmiling. Russ views him with deep eyes of humour and wisdom, and Vulcan features worn by the cares of the galaxy, tanned by humanity's forge. However, the lion believes these all to be a mask, and that only he sees the truth of his father. 
which is a hooded figure, clad in emerald armour, covered in golden robes, behind an ever-gleaming light. Now, a lot is made up of the line that only the lion beheld the truth. However, as ever with these stories, you really need to keep in mind that they are very much written from certain characters' perspectives. So this very much isn't a fact here, this is simply how the lion feels about it. That his brothers see a mask, and only he beholds the truth. So, considering all of this, the first thing that leaps into my mind is that they are obviously each very different viewpoints. And the question is why? Is the Emperor truly appearing in a different guise before each and every one of his sons? Or instead, are they simply viewing him differently? I think the clues for me are very much in each description when you break them down. Take the Khan for example. He is said to describe the Emperor as weather-beaten and unsmiling. Well, this very much is the essence of his relationship with his father. We know they struggled at the best of times to connect with each other. Russ, the eyes of humour and wisdom, well, again, this is a very clear description of his own relationship. And Vulcans too. Features worn by the cares of the galaxy. These all really exhibit strongly the own natures of the Primarchs. And thus too, their own relationship with their father. I mean, could it really be any more evident than the lion's own description? A hooded figure clad in emerald armour, covered in a golden robe. You couldn't get much more Dark Angel vibes here if you tried. And I find it really hard to believe that the Emperor would intentionally appear so differently to each one of his sons. Given these descriptions so akin to the Primarch's own natures, I feel it's much more likely that the Primarchs view their father these ways, because as we know they were created to each inherit a different aspect of his nature. At the end of the day, these are the ways that perhaps the Primarchs want to see him. The Lion witnesses an Emerald Armoured Warlord, because that is what is akin to his nature. Now, for argument's sake, a counterpoint to that would be the viewpoint that Korax had upon his first meeting with his father. And this is within the Horus Heresy novel Deliverance Lost. In this one, when the Emperor finally reached Deliverance and thus reunited with his lost son, Korax describes seeing almost two versions before him almost a split between the classical emperor image. One the appearance as a normal man, average height and build, with tanned skin and dark hair, which are very much hallmarks back to that of the boy from ancient terror. The other he views as the golden light-filled demigod towering above all others. And I think this is the perfect snapshot of exactly who and what the Emperor is. For he is both of these things. In essence, he is a man. The very man that Korax witnesses. However, he is also so much more. And for me, this golden sheathed warlord is almost the psychic imprint the power that the man beneath possesses. And that is, perhaps, what becomes reflected in so many of those appearances. If Korax were to witness the Emperor within the height of the Horus Heresy, would he still see that normal man shrouded in golden light? Or perhaps as he's evolved into his own nature as a Primarch, would he witness something more akin 
to that of his own nature. Would he view the emperor as something different now he has a greater understanding of who he himself is? The Primarch he was created to be. It's certainly an interesting question to ask, and one that I think has great merit. Have all of these perceptions of the Emperor truly been down to his manipulations, or are they in truth mere reflections of his own psychic aura? In being creations of the Emperor's own aspects, the Primarchs in turn see that within him. Now let's compare this to Ezekiel Sidane and Belisarius' cause encounter with the Emperor, when Belisarius was experiencing Sidane's memories. Here he has an encounter with the Emperor of Mankind, and this took place within the novel Belisarius called The Great Work. Now within these memories, Belisarius sees very much the man wearing a scientific lab coat, without any trace of the golden warrior crusading across the stars. Now this one is very clearly because the Emperor was choosing to appear as a scientist, and there's one very marked difference between that and the reflections the Primarchs themselves witnessed. There's simply no trace of the Emperor's psychic power no semblance of his golden light. When the Emperor truly chooses to alter his appearance, he can mask his golden light. In the appearances with the Primarchs, it is more often than not always present. It was present in Korax's reflections, and so too with the Lions. And that to me truly helps persuade the argument that this isn't the Emperor choosing to appear to his sons in a whole manner of guises, but instead what they are seeing within him, their reflections within his psychic aura. There is no doubt the Emperor can and has used different guises over the years to achieve his means, but I really feel the perception of him a lot of the time is more really this reflection of the beholder than any manipulations of the man himself. Perhaps the best answer for just who and what the Emperor truly is goes to the Anathema Sycana themselves, for they see no golden resplendence, no psychic aura of manipulation, just a man, no more, no less just the simple Emperor of Mankind. But as always guys, what did you think? Why do you feel the Primarchs view these different guises within their father? Is he truly appearing to each of them in a different manner? Or like I believe, is it more to do with their own natures within themselves? With the psychic nature of the Emperor, and maybe their own psychic natures, do the Primarchs witness more of their own reflections, the nature they inherited from their father? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.